Today, we'll be discussing what exactly happened to Dr. Shaw and the circumstances of her death. For several years after the release of Prometheus, it was widely assumed that Shaw would return and the sequel would focus on the engineer's paradise planet, where David and Shaw were headed. However, at some point, Ridley Scott or the studio chose to move away from the Prometheus narrative entirely, ultimately deciding to eliminate Dr. Shaw and the engineers. There are, in fact, two official versions of Dr. Shaw's death, and they appear to contradict each other. The first version can be found in the script for Alien, Covenant Prologue, and the second version is in the deleted scene available on Blu-ray where David explains how he created the xenomorph and shows the horrible things he did to Elizabeth Shaw. In the first version of what was called Paradise, formerly Prometheus II, Shaw was alive. They find her, and she's been hiding from David the whole time, and she helps them escape. I told Ridley, my wife and mother-in-law, who are strong characters themselves, they loved Shaw's character, and they think it was a studio call as to why she didn't return. Shaw was hiding in the catacombs from David under the city. The story was that on her trip to the homeworld, she got lonely and had David hanging outside the ship. She didn't want anything to do with him, but she still had to talk to him. Eventually, she ends up bringing his body in and reattaching him, and they become friends. During the trip, he ends up having affection for her in a friendly way. So, they end up going to the city, and that's when David looks at her and tells her that story. Do you trust me? Do you trust that I love you, and everything I'm going to do from this point on is because of you, and that's all to protect you? Shaw looks at him and says, Okay, yes, I do. So, then he turns around and kills all the engineers on the planet. It's his own twisted way of vengeance for her. He kills the planet. Shaw is like, Hey, I wanted to talk to these people, but it's too late. The whole planet is polluted now and everyone on the planet dies. So, that's what happened to Shaw in the early Alien, Covenant draft script. But even in the movie, we still see some elements from this early script. David says that he loved Shaw, and it may even appear at first that he tried to save her by conducting various surgical procedures after she got infected. The prologue depicts David putting Shaw into cryosleep, with Shaw appearing unwell. This led many people to speculate that Shaw might have been infected when the trilobite sack burst open after she removed it and while watching the movie, it may seem at first that David was trying to save her. What actually happened to Shaw is far more disturbing and sinister. As mentioned previously, while it's plausible that Shaw became infected and subsequently died, possibly birthing an alien creature in the process, the extensive 12-page prologue script doesn't confirm this. Instead, the script uncovers the explicit details of how David brutally ended Shaw's life. In the beginning, Shaw is alone and writes a log about what happened to Prometheus refusing to repair David. Shaw writes, Our mission was to discover the origin of human life. We believed our species had been crafted by an alien race. We called them the engineers. We found what we believed was proof of their existence and a map to their home. We thought they wanted us to come find them. We were wrong. The map only led to an outpost full of biological weapons, weapons our creators had intended for U.S. A few pages later, David manipulates Shaw to repair him which turns out to be a deadly mistake for her. But the following pages explain why Shaw made this choice despite David nearly killing her in Prometheus. David says, I don't have much time. Without my power systems connected, my consciousness will soon fail. I understand why you feared me. We always fear those things that are different from us. But I would never hurt you, Dr. Shaw. One of his eyes has stopped working too. He's dying. There is nothing for me to do out here but think. You see, I wonder if I've gone mad. But I understand something new today. Perhaps we're not so different, you and I. Then Shaw responds, We're nothing like each other. David says, I'm frightened too. Shaw stops short, hesitating, listening. David says, I don't want to die alone either. David's confession hits her deep. Maybe it's her isolation, but Shaw is suddenly fighting back tears. I thought you could talk to me for a little while about anything that pleases you, really. I just want to hear a voice as I die. And if you could pretend to be kind to me, then... The script describes Shaw reattaching his head to his body like we saw in the crossing video. Months pass by as they grew closer. Inevitably, Shaw is wary at first, but that gradually fades. But then, the script suggests something really creepy and bizarre, hinting that David sort of became Shaw's boyfriend. 
They grow more and more comfortable, cooking meals, exploring the ship, washing in the water room. Then they are curled together in one of the engineer's huge sleeping pods, asleep, when they finally arrive at the engineer planet, Shaw says. And what if they're no better than us? To which David responds, So long as they're no worse. She's reassured, smiles, then she waves her hand over the controls and the entire front bulkhead shimmers and becomes transparent. We see the engineer homeworld. The sight is overwhelming, a hyper-civilization in its prime, just before the fall. The planet is a close cousin to Earth, swathed in clouds, oceans, an odd metallic blue, but the entire planet is encircled with a huge constructed ring, and the space around the ring is thick with ovoid engineer craft, orders of magnitude larger than David and Shaw's stolen dreadnought. It's more than we can take in. Awe-inspiring. There are tears in Shaw's eyes, like a glimpse into heaven for her. Her emotion is powerful, and her hand instinctively reaches out to take David's. Then David asks her, Is that what you imagine? Shaw's tears say so much more. Then David finally reveals his true colors and says, It's good to see you cry. She glances at him. What then? So suddenly, he reaches up and brutally snaps her neck. She falls dead and David looms over her. The scene truly reveals David's psychopathic tendencies and underlines that he has truly lost his mind. However, despite his insanity, he still felt obligated to show Elizabeth Shaw the dangers in her homeworld as if he owed it to her before taking her life. One of the themes of Alien, Covenant is to demonstrate the potential dangers of AI, like David, when it goes rogue and pursues its own objectives, regardless of the cost of human lives. However, the deleted scene from Alien Covenant available on Blu-ray, seems to contradict this prologue script. It suggests that David killed Shaw because she declined his offer to create a second Eden with him after he destroyed the engineer homeworld as a sacrifice to her. Ironically, Shaw doesn't seem to learn from her past mistakes in Prometheus. She once again finds herself on an operating table with David performing various experiments on her. The entire deleted scene is in the form of a message to Wayland yutani from David in which he summarizes his experiments and successes. It's not widely available, but I can give you a quick overview. David's final lines offer a chilling and methodical explanation of how he orchestrated Shaw's demise, letting her believe there was still hope. This explanation strongly suggests that David had turned into a deranged entity, unable to feel compassion or remorse. The engineers being supreme race feared what they engineered and tried to put a stop to it. David's idea of paradise hints at all the bizarre creatures mutated from human genome obtained from Dr. Shaw. He somehow became obsessed with tragic self-reproducing factor and resiliency of such creatures and somehow began engineering them against Dr. Shaw's refusal, eventually performing horrifying experimentations on her anatomy to grotesque levels, possibly trying to create an alien queen from her DNA. A question always lurks that if she agreed to his twisted plan of creating this so-so paradise planet, what we would have seen like somehow their minds married to each other, abominations of human black goo fusion, xenoplant and animal hybrids which may have been domesticated by David. He is so corrupted to the point that he can create a race that somehow he will make them obey him. Well that's all of the disturbing lore. If I miss something or you know some new info jot it down in comments.